.NET MAUI Preview 7 is here, focusing in on reliability and performance. I feel like I've done this so many times for all the .NET MAUI Preview videos that I've done here on my channel. But anyways, we're here, we're back, and today I'm gonna show you how to get .NET MAUI Preview 7 set up on your Mac OS device. I'm gonna be setting up on my M1 MacBook Air and also inside of Visual Studio 2022 on Windows, so tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James Montemagno. I'm back with yet another .NET MAUI preview video. Preview 7 just dropped this week. And if you watch any of my old videos, you can kind of see a progression as .NET MAUI continues to go. Now, I also like to answer questions along the way. So before I get into them, you know, I want to make sure I address some of your questions. But before I do that, if you like this video or you think you're going to like it, jam that like button right there and hit that subscribe notification bell down there so you get updated with all the new videos I put out right here on this channel every week. Do that. Hit the like button. Yeah, it'd be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. It helped the channel a lot. Okay, right, .NET MAUI. So MAUI is the multi-platform app UI part of .NET 6. This enables you to build iOS, Android, iPad OS, Mac OS, Windows applications, all from a single shared code base. It is the evolution of Xamarin Forms, which enables you to build iOS, Android, and Windows apps from a shared code base. Um, and of course, it really focus on mobile scenarios. Down in Maui is going to enable developers to focus on mobile and desktop scenarios. And additionally, I've shown in many of my preview videos, .NET MAUI Blazor, which also enables you to mix in Blazor web content into your .NET MAUI application. So you can share code between your web Blazor app and your .NET MAUI application as much or as little as you want, which I think is really, really neat to get those native desktop apps that you may want or mobile desktop apps um, with native API access and native controls or blend in some of that, you know, web goodness into the mix. Totally up to you. I've also gotten a lot of questions of like, you know, hey, do what's up with Xamarin Forms and, you know, should I start now? What should I do here? You know, .NET MAUI is set to release and we'll look at the roadmap here with .NET 6, which will be in November with .NET Comp. So make sure you go to .NET Comp.net and register today and add it to your bookmark. It's a completely free event happening in November. We'll talk about all this stuff, all, all the, the community and the .NET team. Um, but you know, for me, you know, Xamarin and Xamarin Forms will be supported for yet another year. And of course, I'm shipping Xamarin Forms applications today. All of your knowledge, all of your insight there will come over. In fact, on the most recent .NET MAUI community standup, they talked about tools of converting Xamarin apps into .NET MAUI applications. So to me, you know, as .NET MAUI evolves, it's fun to play around with, do file new, try to look at how I can like bring in some of my source code. But you know, often you want to kind of wait until at least RC or GA to start kind of messing around. But it's all up to you. Um, I have been playing around quite a bit and I've been enjoying every single preview update of .NET MAUI. So last video I asked, hey, do you want to see the setup process on Mac OS? And all of you said yes. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And of course, if you have any questions, there's another video I'll put right up here. I'll ding it right there, which is should you wait for .NET MAUI or just start with Xamarin Forms? It's still relevant. Go check that out today. Let's head over to my Mac. So I like to start where I always start, which is on David's blog posts are absolutely fantastic. Um, and Preview 7 is available. It's focused on performance and reliability, which you see right here, and new semantic service for font scaling and accessibility, which is very, very exciting. So he shows off some of the new grid systems and new layouts. This is actually really important. They've gone away with the old sort of you know, implementations. There's brand new layouts and implementations for grid, flex layout, and stack layout, including the new horizontal and vertical stack layouts. And those are the ones I use the most. I mostly use stack layout and grid, and that's about it. Um, they do show you that you can um, change uh, defaults uh, uh, global. They're setting them the spacing to zero, so you can override that. You can also use the MAUI controls compatibility layer here, which will enable you to use like absolute layout, for example. There's other things such as some new accessibility improvements. They've removed tab index and is tab stop, but they have announced this brand new semantic um, um, focus and announcement and also font scaling. So if you're doing screen reader support, which you totally should be, um, you can use this new API to improve that there. Also font scaling, this is pretty cool. You can see 
the font scale with the devices themselves. So that's really, really cool. And you can enable it or disable it automatically. There's a bunch of other improvements over here that you can kind of walk through, such as uh, scroll view handler, shell provider, and a bunch more. Um, but you know what I like to do is go through the roadmap and then talk about the setup. So preview six had a lot of stuff in it, devices, gestures, native view, shell, triggers. This one has some more app theme bindings, layout, frame in there, and we'll see release candidates coming up with borders, corners, shadows, um, and then bug fixes and some more lifecycle events. Also, you'll see some updates down here as we get closer to GA, what's going to make the cut, what's not going to make the cut. This could change at any time, so definitely check that out. All right, so what do you need to do to get this puppy all set up over on your Mac? All right, so you're ready to go and you're like, oh man, Mac time, let's do it. You're going to need a few things. First, you're going to need a Mac OS device that includes support for Mac um, Xcode 13 beta. So that's what you'll need to use. That's a requirement if you're going to be doing Don and Maui on a Mac. Now, right now, there's no support in Visual Studio 2019 and Visual Studio 2022 for Mac is not out yet or in preview. So everything you're going to be doing on a Mac is inside of VS Code or command line, all right? So you need to get Maui check, which we'll talk about here, and also Xcode 13 beta. So when you head over to the Apple developer portal, you'll see Xcode 13 on there. I'll put it in the show notes below as well. And you'll you know basically figure out the setup. You want to hit click here and click on Xcode 13 beta. You'll log into your account and you'll want to click on applications. And there it is, Xcode 13 beta 5. Um, and we can actually see that I have it right here, Xcode beta. You can run Xcode side by side Xcode beta. So when you download it and you go ahead and extract it, it will automatically be Xcode dash beta and you can slap that in your application folder. All right. Uh, now the next part here is actually the same, the installation. You're going to obviously not install Visual Studio 2022 preview, but you're going to go down here into .NET MAUI check. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just minimize a few things. There we go. And I'm going to pull up my terminal. Now, uh, I'm not a terminal person, so I actually didn't know that um, by default ZSH terminal is the thing that actually is, you know, being put up here. Um, but I learned a few things here. The first is that before you even get started with Maui check, you're going to need to go to the .NET website, .NET. Then what you're going to do is click on download and you click on Mac. And then under .NET, you're going to say all .NET downloads here, okay? And you're going to see .NET 6. Again, I'll put a link into the show notes here. And you'll want to install Preview 7 of .NET 6. And over here under Mac OS, I use the installer, and you want to use the X64 installer. Now, I did mention I'm in an M1 ARM-based device, but you still need the X64 installer of the SDK. From my experience, your mileage may very. Now, the next thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and install Maui check. This is a tool that for right now is a great way to get your machine set up. So what you'll want to do here is go ahead and paste that in and hit enter and make sure it's installed. I already have it installed. Now, if you run Maui check and you get an error, it's because the .NET global tools, which is what Maui check is, um, can't run by default out of the box with ZSH in the terminal. You can go into bash and it'll run just fine, or you can come in and add the path um, correctly. So you say export path dollar sign home dot net slash tools um, dollar sign path. And what this will do is it'll assign basically update the ZSH config environments folder and just make sure it's included there. Um, else you can just go into bash. I'll put a link into one of the documentation talking about this, but now you can just say Maui dash check And here, for example, so I guess it didn't do it. So, you know, you'll, you'll want to set that command, I guess, again, and then do Maui check. I guess I didn't do it on this one, but you'll be good to go. So that's where you export it. That's one way of doing it. You probably want to update the config. So it's there all the time. Many ways of doing it. I just go into bash, but again, it's up to you. 
So I ran Maui check and I've done this before and I did this ahead of time. But what this will do is it'll install OpenJDK 11. It will make sure um, vi any Visual Studio requirements are there, even though it's, you know, you're not going to do this in Visual Studio. It'll make sure your Android emulators and SDKs are installed. Um, it'll ensure Xcode is configured. Xcode 13 beta is installed and .NET 6 is installed and all of the workloads. So basically just follow along, go for it. There you go. Now, one thing to note, though, is that I had issues and I was talking to John Dick with this step here, the Xcode 19203, which is the latest beta of Xcode. So it needs to make sure that it's there. Now, if we go into my application folder here, we'll see that Xcode. Where is it at? Xcode. Oh, there it is. There's Xcode beta app and Xcode here. So there's this. So what I needed to do is I need to run a sudo command, which was Xcode select and then dash S, which will actually select it accordingly and set w which Xcode I want to use. And here we're going to use Xcode dash beta app. Run this command and it'll automatically set it. And then you'll have to enter your password and that'll set it accordingly and you'll be good to go. All right, now we are ready to go. If I do .NET new over here, what we should see is that, um, I guess .NET new dash s list, that will give us all of our applications. So we have Razor, MVC, all the things in here. And of course we have our .NET MAUI app. There it is, and .NET MAUI Blazor. So they're all right there to do iOS, Android, and Mac Catalyst. So we up installed Xcode 13 beta. That takes, it took me like an hour or two because it's a big file and it takes forever to extract. We did MAUI check, got that all up and running. And of course we need to install .NET 6 um, Preview 7 as well. But now what we can do is I can just go in and let me just do, um, I'm gonna do bash again because I'm just more familiar with bash commands. I'm gonna do uh, dir, I'm gonna do cd, oh sorry, ls. No. I don't know why I sound dir, but there we go. Um, CD um, desktop, let me do make dir, and I'm gonna do, um, someone said that I was mixing commands, but you know, whatever, uh, Maui 7 app, that's what I'm gonna make, and then I'll do CD Maui 7 app, and now I can do .NET new uh, Maui. Uh, and since I'm inside the folder, it is going to go ahead and create that application for me. Now I'm gonna open up VS Code, and we're gonna open that folder, over here, I'm gonna to go to my desktop and Maui app and open it. So there we go. And I'm gonna select the project here as the main CS proj, not the solution, just this main one here. Um, only because this is the win UI one, I don't really need that. But if we go in over here, we can say there's a platforms folder with my Android, my iOS, and my Mac Catalyst code here, which is quite cool. Resources, we've seen it before. If I open up this, um, we can go ahead and see that this is going to give us our iOS Android Mac Catalyst support, gives us all of our information here, gives us our icons, our images, our splash screens. And of course we have our startup file, so it configures fonts for us, which is super cool. And we have our main page. So similar hello world button clicker event. So now what we're going to do is go into terminal. All right. And there is a repo. There is a repo called Maui Samples, and this will tell you basically how to get everything up and running and installed. But more importantly, as you scroll down, you'll see these commands here, which is how to run the iOS or Mac Catalyst versions from the command line. So when we go over, we're just going to go in here and copy this, go into here, and I'm going to just go ahead and paste this. There we go. But I'm going to go ahead and change Hello Maui to Maui 7 app. Now dash run is going to run it on Mac Catalyst. So we're going to do a Mac Catalyst app first. This is going to restore everything that we need. It's going to actually bundle up our Mac Catalyst application and then run it right here on my Mac OS device, which is really cool. And Mac Catalyst is a really nice piece of technology because what it does is it takes your iOS application and it turns it into a native Mac application at the end of the day. 
So again, this is going to compile the code, go through some compilation, and then run my application. So let's see what we have here. Oh, it's going to open it for the first time. That sounds good. And now it took about 30 seconds to actually build and compile that. And what we should see is there's my Maui application. There it is. Boom. So here it says, hello world, click me and I'm clicking away. Click, 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 count up and we're good to go. Donna bot waves and says, hello, same thing. So now you can change your code. You can do anything you want and you're off to the races. Um, same thing here. Um, if I go and now do this command again, so let's go ahead and, um, uh, scroll this up a little bit here. Let me just go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Um, bup, 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 bup. Pull this up. And if I do, for example, instead of Matt Catalyst, I do Net6 iOS, we're now going to see that this will build and compile the same application, but it's going to go ahead and run it on my iOS simulator. Now it's going to go ahead and pick a simulator that's the default. There are some commands on how to configure that and, and actually select it. But of course, once Visual Studio 2022 for Mac launches, it'll be able to do a drop down and pick. So this is going to go ahead and wait, and it's going to pull up all of our information, and then should launch our simulator. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, there's our simulator. And for some reason, it wants to pick the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, but whatever, it's totally there. And uh, it's going to launch it up. So we'll see here. Oh, there it is. Hello world. And click, 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 click. And I'm clicking away. So there you go. Well, there you have it. There is Mac OS set up to do our Mac catalyst iOS. Of course you can do Android there as well by doing dash Android and it would go ahead and deploy it. Now, the next thing we want to do is take a look at what's new in visual studio 2022 preview seven. Now, if you already have the previous, um, um versions installed, you can go into the Visual Studio installer and get the update there. And of course, you still want to run Maui check just to be confirmed. And we'll go ahead and go through that. But let's go ahead and hop over to the Windows machine and see it running now on Windows with WinUI 3 and also Android right over here. All right, now, actually, before I get into the Windows bits and pieces here, I actually realized that over on Build Your First App, there's a .NET CLI option here, which is kind of cool. There's Visual Studio 2022, but also CLI. And that actually walks you through all the things I just did, but it also gives you select an iOS simulator, which I was just talking about. And now I know how to do it. So you can actually go and select the UDID automatically and set that, which is super cool. All right. Well, now let's say we want to go ahead and get up and running. Well, the installation guide is fantastic. It literally shows you all the things you need to do and install in the single project MSIX version that just got updated for WinUI and also install the latest .NET 6 preview and .NET MAUI check, which is super rad. So let's go ahead and do all that stuff, all right? So the first thing over here, let's go ahead and put the terminal over here for now. And what we want to do is open the Visual Studio installer. Make sure you have preview three installed. That's the latest one there. Also make sure when you hit modify here that you want ASP.NET if you want the Blazor stuff, the .NET desktop, .NET desktop, or C, desktop C++, mobile.net, WinUI, those are the five boxes you need, and boom, you're good to go. Um, cool, that's it. So if we head back over to the terminal, uh, what we can now note is that we want to run Maui check. Now, if you don't have Maui check, you can come into the installation guide and run it here. If you have any issues updating it, you can just update it manually with the update command and then run Maui check. This is going to check your machine for all the .NET versions. It's going to check it for all of the workloads, everything like that. It'll make sure everything is good. And you can see it did it. So it installed the .NET SDK, Android SDKs, emulators, all the good stuff there. You can also type in .NET workload list, and that will show you workloads installed in your machine. If for some reason something is out of whack and it's telling you that you need to install a workload, maybe Maui check failed somewhere, you can do .NET workload install Android, for example, and then it will go ahead and install the Android workload there. So you'll want to make sure that you have all four of those listed. And then at that point, you should be able to do .NET new Maui right over here. And I'm in a test folder and it should tell you that you're good to go. Now here it's telling me that an update is available um, over here. An update for this is available. It says I currently have version seven, 
but it's telling me an RC is available. And I think that's because in an earlier preview, you had to manually add the R or the, the, the NuGet feed for the desktop. So I think I'm on like internal bits. Um, so definitely make sure you have the latest seven installed. When I first did this, it didn't install seven. It had six still. So what I did is I went over to the NuGet here, and this is the Microsoft Maui templates. And you can just tap on 7134, and then you can just copy this little command here, come back over here, and then install the specific version of the Maui templates, and you'll be good to go. But additionally, now what you can do is actually open up Visual Studio 2022 uh, Preview 3, and you can come over here and say Create New Project. You can see I've created a lot of Maui projects because there's a Maui button in the drop down. So there's Maui and there's .NET Maui app and .NET Maui Blazor app. Now, remember here for .NET Maui app, that's using you know XAML and, and creating native user interface across iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. .NET Maui Blazor adds in the ability to basically scaffold and use Blazor, Razor, templating and engines in your .NET MAUI application. So you can share code between web and your native applications, which is really cool. So as much or as little as you want. And what's nice about that is that, you know, when you think about Blazor apps, those sometimes running on WebAssembly or in the server, but here it's just running inside of .NET MAUI. So it already has a .NET runtime. So nothing extra there. So we're going to go, I like how there's a, uh, this button is, is uh, purple. Oh, that's really nice. Anyways, .NET MAUI app, .NET MAUI app six. And then we should be able to go ahead and just create our application right in Visual Studio. So the templates are all there. It'll give us everything we need. Now, there's nothing dramatically different over here from what we saw earlier. So let me zoom in and notice that we have platforms, Android, iOS, all the stuff from earlier, dependencies. We have platforms over uh, here, like I said, resources for your fonts and your images. There's a startup file that has all of your startup information. There we go, right? So it has add fonts. This is where you put your dependency injection, your services. This is going to pull in all of those NuGet packages, all everything you need. And um, we have our WinUI project too. Now, I, th I think that I've been having some issues running WinUI on mine. I'm not sure if it's solved. I was reading some comments. So I'll post some comments on this feed if, if anything's changed, but I'm just going to focus on Android for now. In the top menu, um, I can actually go to framework and select Net6 Android over here. For iOS, I could connect to a Mac or I can do hot restart as well. I think hot restart's working, but it's there. And what we can see is that I can select Android local device, which I totally have plugged in right now, or emulator. I'm going to go ahead and select that and just hit debug. And that should go ahead and start it up right over here on my Android emulator. Now, I did notice that things seem to be uh, quite a lot faster. Uh, David, on the most recent .NET Maui community standup gave an overview of some of the um, boot time kind of um, optimizations they're doing and package configuration too. So definitely check that out. I'll put a link to it in the show notes as well. The other thing I want to mention here is that all of that single project goodness is here. So we see multi-targeting, we see uses Maui, single project, namespaces, and of course, all of the cross-platform goodness with images, splash screens, and fonts. Um, so it's all set up here. So the entire project is just under, you know, 50 lines of code basically here. All right. So it is now deploying to my Android emulator. So it's finishing packaging and compilation. And this is the same project that we've been seeing in all of my other videos. So it says, hello world. Welcome to not app, uh, multi-platform app UI. And then there's a current count. Now the difference here. Like David said in the blog post is that the engines for grid and stack layout um, and flex layout are all using brand new handlers. So they're super optimized and will be working really, really good out of the box. So here we go. We have Maui app six installed. So it should go ahead and launch into debug. And we're just doing it in real time. Here we go. Boom. This is pretty cool because I'm now debugging fully my .NET Maui app built with preview seven. All right, cool. Now, um, this is going to look exactly the same Don app out bot. You can click, um, with the new layout optimizations, we can see that everything is working really, really cool. Um, which is awesome. And we're good to go. I don't think hot reload is working just yet for, oh, it is. Okay. So it's at least working in some instances here. So changing that stuff and making it good to go, um, is working. 
Now let's see if I can take some code from like the grid, for example. Let's just grab a grid here. Let's see if this hot reload is working or not. Let's see if I can just delete this and put that in there. Oh, there we go. So we have a grid. We have a grid. It looks like some of the labels maybe are working, maybe not working with the hot reload. But here I just paste it in a grid with a bunch of different views. And now I'm getting that fully optimized grid out of the box. One of the big changes that they made here is that there's no um, spacing in between the columns and the rows. So actually, if you go over into the blog post, you'll see that here that you can add that in by adding a resource dictionary with spacing. Um, if you want to go ahead and pull that back, that was one of the things that um, kind of always bugged uh, some developers um, was that you couldn't um, couldn't add that in there. Let me see if this will read you. Let's go ahead and reboot it here. Um, is that there was always spacing by default. So if you copied and pasted some code, maybe from WPF, it was going to look a little bit different. Oh, we changed some code here. So let's go into the code behind. Let's go ahead and get rid of that counter label there. And let's go ahead and debug it one more time over here. There we go. So now what we should see ideally is that our resource dictionary is going to basically just set defaults here for spacing and rows, um, which is cool. And of course, over here, if you want to use uh, old ones like absolute layout, you can use the back combat. Additionally, you can use all this new um, semantic um, font size and scaling as well. So let's go ahead and let this boot up with our new changes and let's see what it looks like. Um, it's pretty cool. All right, so the application is now booting up into debug. And of course, the debugger is attaching. And there we go. There we go. Awesome. So now we actually have our spacing back and all of our fonts, all that stuff in there, all using the new layout system. And it does look like some of the hot reload is working out of the box. Let's see if that'll work. I think so. Boom. There we go. At least some of the properties are working, which is really cool. It's really fun to watch down in Maui evolve and add some of these new features in there. And of course, like I said, you could go ahead and attach this to a Mac and you could deploy on the iOS simulators. All that is in the documentation. Well, there you have it. That is .NET MAUI Preview 7, uh, which I'm really excited to see the progression and some of the brand new things coming down. You may have noticed that I have a different shirt on. Well, that's because Visual Studio 2022 Preview 3, um, some of the, the CDN stuff was uh, out of whack. And uh, now it's all fixed. So I waited a day. I'm feeling a little bit better. You can probably tell the difference in my voice from the Mac OS over to the Windows um, over here. Just another day and slowly getting better. And hopefully by the time this video is out, I will be 100% and back in it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I'd super appreciate that. If you want more awesome developer content, ding that notification bell, hit the subscribe button, do all the things. I think you have to do it in reverse order. Subscribe first. And of course, like it and, and then do all the things and share it with a friend. Why not? Anyways, thanks so much. If you have any questions, leave comments below and I'll try to answer them. So until next time, thanks for watching.